I was previously diagnosed with aplastic anemia in 2008 um, and became well and went into remission in 2010. I became Miss University of North Alabama in 2011. It was an amazing experience. It was my third time competing in the pageant and to be able to be known as the first black Miss UNA was an amazing experience on top of that. I graduated from the University of North Alabama in 2012. So it was 2014, it was two years later, I felt like I was becoming an adult, getting into the work field. Um, I was working at a company, so I was so excited about that. And then in 2014, aplastic anemia came back and with that came the PNH that I was diagnosed with. So being diagnosed with PNH at the beginning was it was very, um, we are a very spiritual family. So I live with my parents and they were able to help me a lot with just getting through, you know, it is a mental thing once you are diagnosed with um, a blood disorder and two on top of that. So you, you deal with things physically, emotionally, and mentally. Um, we just didn't know where to start at. We didn't know who to go to, who to contact. Um, and we had two um, doctors that were helping us, one at Emory and one here at Brookwood Hospital. But they both were also kind of confused because they had never met anyone that was diagnosed with PNH. I want to say this, the one thing that my husband and I prayed and asked God was to take it from her and give it to us. Yes. That, I mean, we, we really did like pray that on our knees. We had made a decision, we were going to take her all the way to Seattle, Washington, <laughs> to, to the mothership, what they call the mothership of aplastic anemia and uh, talk to them. And, uh, but luckily we found a doctor here and she was very, very amazing who, who just got everything rolling for us. And then once we got that going and she introduced us to what we could do and we actually found Dr. Arrington. Now he is like the number one guy in our life. He, he tweaks some medicine so everything works out and she's, you know, she don't have to actually be hooked up to something where it's intravenously and, and it kind of takes away from her life. She still can function now. You know what I'm saying? And still be live a life. And that's what we want her to have. We want to be able to live her life and enjoy what she's got. You know? One of the things that he said when we on our first visit was that he would change her life. Yeah. Without um her having his goal was to change her life without her having to go through having a bone marrow transplant. Right. Being at the PNH walk um, with my family, that was the first time we attended something, you know, for me. I had been dealing with fertility issues on top of that, so I was able to meet some other women that had PNH and how they dealt with it fertility wise. And so to have their input was really cool. Um, siblings not being a 100% match was devastating. Um, my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter have both said that if she ever needs them to carry her children, that they would do that. Um, but I don't believe they'll have to. I believe Wendy's going to have children of her own. So for us, or for me wellness-wise, the things that helped keep me um, stress-free, I would say, of everything I was going through, um, of course, first off, it was God praying, reading my Bible, just going to church still, even when I had to wear a mask and I couldn't sit by anybody. Probably my favorite thing is just the color. Um, and my sisters would actually bring me different coloring books. That really helped me um, mentally also is just to be able just to kind of let my mind go away and just to not think of anything and just to be, just be. So one quote that I think sums up my life um, it's actually from Eleanor Roosevelt. It was, do one thing every day that scares you. So for me, everything every day that I was doing was scaring me. Needles were not my friend. Um, having to go to the doctor was not fun. Um, being in the hospital, uh, I dreaded that. And I think wheelchairs honestly were the worst part for me. I hate being rolled out in wheelchairs. I don't know why. Um, at one point, I was, we were at in the hospital and there were people in the hospital who had no visitors, who never had visitors. And I found myself visiting them and one day Brandy said, today can you just be my mama? And not only have we been the support system to her, we've had an incredible support system. Yeah. Um, family, but pro our friends and our jobs, his right. job, my job, her job, um, my daughter's jobs, I mean, People have been just incredible. Um, our city, 
um, the school where I worked, which is where they attended school. Yeah, just a um, lot I, of they have been, love. Yeah, they have of. had prayer sessions in our front yard um, when she couldn't touch anybody or talk to anybody. <laughs> she stood in the door and waved. I just think, you know, if I could encourage anybody, it would be to, you know, remain calm, re do research. Research is the key. There's there's yeah. a lot of help out there. You just have to find um, it. Mm -hmm. it. Research. Um, don't give up. Um, laugh. Laugh. Enjoy it's life. Kind of you really do it. it really, you really do. Yeah. There were many times we'd be in the middle of crying in the hospital room and um, we'd just find something to laugh about.